Off uh, with Ronan Agari. Good morning, Ronan. Good morning. How are you, boys? How are you getting on? The weather must be pretty good over there because it's miserable here. Oh, it's freezing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not over there though. I ah. <laughs> I, I snuck away for three days to we'll test your geography you now uh, to Tagazoot. 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 Yeah, well, we have to keep going now because you <laughs> don't know where I am. Um. Is it, uh, sounds like uh, sort of French, almost like Moroccan. Getting distracted here by Alan Quinlan outside. Very, you're seven up very ten. warm. Well done. You um, got it in one. All right. What did you say, Morocco? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good shot. Making my, making my debut in Morocco at 46 years of age. So. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Have you... interesting, interesting place. Only Have here, only arrived when last night, is it? I have to go home Sunday morning, so. Um, but, Have you... uh, blast the sun, yeah. Blast the sun. Blast the sun. I thought you might have declared, you might have done like a, um, what's his name from Munster, whose name is totally got out of my head, Ben Healy. Yeah. Would, would you have always, I always wonder that with travelling. Like you, you seem, you, you strike me as a man who would like to travel, Rog, but I suppose when you're a rugby player and you're, you're talented at 21, you don't get to do the J1 and the interrail and all, the, all, the, all that sort of thing. You miss out on a few things. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I think that's very, uh, Consistent with a lot of mindsets of playing too, you know. I've been around the world yet; I've seen none of it because you go bus to training ground to hotel, bus training ground. Wednesdays was a day off. A lot of the lads actually, in fairness to them, went and got to see things on their day off. But Wednesday's a big kicking day for test kickers, you know. So you're that's your one focus where you can, I suppose, get the work in uh, because it's not too late in the week to tweak something um, and you need to get repetition in so Wednesday yeah I could have organised myself most definitely to go kick in the morning and uh, go enjoy yourself in the afternoon but it was kind of more back to the to the uh, hotel and lock yourself up in the room and pretend you're, you're preparing well you know which obviously isn't the case in hindsight <laughs> stick on a couple of episodes of friends or whatever yeah <laughs> um so it, you have two weeks before the next game, is that it? And so just if uh, well, not no, sure. One week is gone, would you believe? So we're, there's no top fourteen this weekend, no top fourteen the following weekend, and then um, back into top fourteen, and then you're up the following week. So it's getting exciting notes. It's um, getting close to um, you know elimination in both competitions, obviously. So um, that's that's when it becomes uh, interesting. Well, look, given you're away, we, uh, uh, thanks for uh, taking the call. Uh, because, uh, <laughs> From sure Tagazoot in Morocco. Say, Listen, lads, you can, uh, you can take a break this week. So let's get into it, um, obviously, with the Scotland match. And Finn Russell particularly, because we've chatted to you, uh, with you about him a lot over the last couple of years. And, like, there's a... What's the nature... Do you still have a contact with him? I know you like, there was a bit of a relationship there at some point. Uh yeah, I, you know, from playing in France, obviously, are two foreigners, obviously. I never played with Ryan Coach in there, so he would have been friends with, or is friends with Donica Ryan and uh, Simon Zebo and all the racing guys and Mike Prendergast. But uh, what's good in France, actually, before the games, you, I mean, if you play at nine o'clock, you, you'd meet them for coffee the day of the game, uh, just to chat. Uh, and so when we went up, La Rochelle went up to racing, I met him and just, he's someone that's very easy to speak to he's very friendly and um you just kind of he was obviously in a little bit of um no man's land and wondering where uh where he may end up you know and uh he's obviously an attractive proposition to try and sign uh but jimmy the discussions didn't get off the ground and the fact that you I mean i wouldn't have a budget to sign finn russell um at, at club level so uh we had a bit of a, a joke and a laugh about about one or two things, and then um, you know, I mean, he, he goes on, but you can, um, you know, you you can um, see, I suppose, his strengths and his weaknesses in in in, um, in in a lot of games. But his upside is huge, and his obviously his downside is uh, it can be a d devastatingly uh, disappointing, but. Uh, you know what I mean? He's someone that you'd like to work with. Yes, he is. I think he saved the Lions Tour. That's quite a big statement. But mm -hmm. he alone, probably, when he came into it, he saved that because it was a COVID tour, which had 
completely fallen for the style of rugby that was played and also uh, the lack of atmosphere in the game. But he came in and, and he played heads up rugby and I think he, he, he saved the face of rugby in that in that tour for me. I think he's um, like a million quid a year at Bath. I don't know if that's... Uh if that's uh, how accurate that is, but I think that was a number. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. It's, it's it's a lot of money for one player. You want to be obviously. selling a lot of coffee for that? Yeah, you do, exactly. You know, And I think the way it's made in England, isn't it, in the Premiership, though, there's two players who um, escaped the salary cap and they're known as marquee players, so you can pay them exactly what you want and how you like, you know. So there's yeah. obviously um, golden rules for certain players and, and that's... That's the way it is. So that's no fault to Finn Russell's. You know, he's he's accepting a contract he's been offered. So more power to him. Do you just throw it out to him by way? Because it'd be a great fit. I mean, imagine the excitement of him playing in a Rona Garrett team. Do you just throw it out there by way of like half grin, sort of? I mean, we could do this if you were up for it. No, and exactly, it can very much happen. It's and for happen very quickly, but. Um, I mean, the major stumbling block is the guys and competitors want, they want to play rugby and they want to enjoy themselves. And the finance is another uh, component that's very important because it's not like soccer, obviously, that guys have to continue working when they're finished their playing days. But um, the the difference between what I had potentially available and what he merits or, or warrants or... Um, would be a respectful offer wasn't even um, close so you can't make an offer on with you touched on just a little bit earlier on there when you mentioned about he his sort of um, I can't remember exactly how you worded it but uh, maybe I might summarise it as a consistency bit uh, with his um, performances he seems to be in an unbelievable vein of form at the minute in terms of the consistency aspect of things what do you have you noticed that or what do you put it down to and uh, leading on from that how do we stop him yeah I think I've probably been because I'm over here but like you've got to understand he's everyone has a snapping point and I think he's very close to it he, he played a game last Saturday night and it finishes close to midnight and uh, which is a really, really, really important club game for his club. But I think that's for me is when you know the player. So when you understand what goes through the head of, of, of a test player in Six Nations, he doesn't want to be next or near the club game. And he's earned the right to pick his games and the fact that he wants to play his best rugby for Scotland. But you can imagine he's not going to say, because his club is paying his wages, that no, I'm not up for this, but... Like he had a very good 50 minutes against Toulouse and then kicked four out of four. And then the last 50 minutes, uh, because of his workload up to then, he's still probably one of the only players in the championship that's playing test game, club game, test game, test game, club game, on the bench club game, test uh, test game, club game. You know, his workload is, is double, triple. And then you've got to factor in travel over and back to camp in Scotland. And, uh, you know, so essentially... His performance um, completely dipped in the last 20 minutes in, in the Toulouse game and he missed three kicks of goal, which probably comes down to fatigue. And he also missed um, a kind of match point, shall we say, a penalty to racing of 40 metres out from the Toulouse loan. He was aggressive with his kick, but too aggressive and missed uh, touch from touch and goal, scrum back four minutes to go. Massive release of pressure. Um, but... Uh, you know what I mean the question I was probably asking in my head is that um, he is a very special player but does he need to be on the pitch at that stage um, mm. you mean I, I know the, the the racing number second choice 10 are, are um, isn't as good but with his workload I think it probably would have been uh, a little bit smarter to have have him removed because he's like all players, the, the Six Nations is a very, very special uh, tournament and per players really prioritise that. It's funny, Ronan, like Finn Russell for me probably typifies the importance of the the out-half coach relationship. Like himself and Gregor Townsend have, have fallen out many times and, and yet here they are at the pinnacle of, of the Six Nations um, and Finn Russell is playing brilliantly well. Like it doesn't surprise me to, to hear that you get on well so well with him. Like there's a, 
there's almost a bit of a Ronnie O'Sullivan about him. There's a a cheek and a glint in the eye. So there's a bit of, there's a bit of something else with with Finn Russell, and yet he's hyper focused yeah, when he needs good. to be. That's a very good comparison, I think. You know, uh, in in terms of the talent, obviously he doesn't have the the trophies to back that up. You know, because Ronnie O'Sullivan is the best of the best. No, mm-hmm. that's a fair point. So that, that's a Dan character, you know. Um, so, but uh, talent wise, I think yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, and probably where I think in the big difference he's made in the last twenty four months is probably consistency of performances. Uh, I think when he went off, probably. Uh, form in the past it was probably for periods of game when he goes off form at the minute it's for little moments in the game it, it, and that's the way he plays and I think that's okay but I agree I think uh, once he feels he has your trust I think which he probably didn't have with Gregor Townsend up to probably this campaign uh, you can see that he uh, he's a very uh, very interesting player to have in your group and, and that was proven when he was working with Mike Prendergast in, in racing you know kind of uh, they had a fantastic relationship, still still do, and you could see that uh, I mean, Finn at times was, was unplayable in the top 14 because of, I suppose, uh, the the mindset Mike was able to create for, to have Finn happy in his mind. Mm. Andy Farrell could do worse from what you're saying than uh, pick up the phone to Mike Prendergast this week and uh, look No, but we're spent whatever, 10, 15 minutes and all we're doing is talking about Finn Russell and Scott <laughs> and there's so many players like that in the Irish team that we can talk yeah. about for, for 10, 15 minutes. I think that's probably a key point. You know, where you look at the team Ireland are going to pick this week again and it's such quality, the 23. And for me, you know, I mean, there's... Uh, hysterics about Owen Farr being dropped for England. Owen Farr hasn't been dropped for England. Owen Farr is going to finish the game and as a coach I can tell you sometimes you want to finish with your best 15 so this little hullabaloo about oh he's lost his place I wouldn't read it at all like that I just think um, I mean England are looking to start one way and I think they're looking to finish another way and you've got two gems in, in Farrell and Smith and I agree I think two of them starting the game is maybe not the way to go but I think you'd see both of them have a big say on Saturday, but all, all you can see in the lead up to the game is is that they've gone for for Smith over Farrell, but uh, that may not be the thinking, you know. It's very interesting that you would put it that way, and a whole blue is, of course, the right way of putting it. And like because I'm looking at the um, Borthwick interview, going, there's something else in his mind. He's not authentically answering the question when he gets asked about it, right? Because he's given, to be fair, a version of what you're saying there. The only sort of slight argument for what you're saying is that every coach up to this point has managed to find room for him. It's not always a 10, of course, but they've managed to find room for him in there somewhere, which presumably there is some sort of a seed of doubt with Borthwick around him. Otherwise, he'd have him in the team. Yeah, but that is, that's, that's what the coach's job is. You know, he, he he's earned the right to coach England and now he's, he's, he's doing it and that's why the coach has a huge role, a huge role because selection and combinations and timing and uh, playing certain guys with certain people or not with others is hugely important and that's is what he'd be judged on. So he's gone for this option and, um, you know, I think let's, let's just watch and maybe see that uh, he, his thinking is ahead of ours mm. or certain people because... I, I like the the idea of of, of launching uh, Smith, giving him control, letting him have the crack at the at the week, seeing seeing what he can do. You need two of them either way. They're not far away from a World Cup. It's a big game. It's a better game for put it this way. I don't think you can start Smith in Dublin ahead of uh, at ten as a po- sorry. That's the wrong language. I think it is a much better choice by Bartwick to start Smith in Twickenham with 80,000 people roaring him on than starting him in the Aviva when you're going to have whatever, 40, 50,000 people um, hoping he makes an error every time he touches the ball. So that, for me, is setting up a, a young tent to succeed. Put him in a in a non-hostile environment, in a in a warm, kind of comforting stadium where he'd have his teammates and the public roaring him on. So I, I like that choice. Yeah, it's a horses for courses thing, basically, is what you're saying. Well, Farrell is proven and will be proven and is a winner and is a competitor and is not going to sulk because he's not in the starting team. You know he's going to be good to go. There's probably a lot more question marks over Smith at this level, but 
Um, England have a good draw in the World Cup. They're not going to win the Six Nations, so maybe there's some great, um, I suppose, um, learnings for them over the next two weeks. I've been thinking uh, it's a classic Irish mentality that it hasn't been a vintage Six Nations and, uh, you know, Ireland are sort of, I, let's not use the language of running away, but certainly ahead of the pack at the minute and let's see what happens this weekend on the basis that maybe some of the rest of them are, haven't been quite up to it. I would be very interested in your thoughts on that given the uh, years, obviously, that you would have been involved with Ireland and how rare it is that success comes around. Well, it's been, I think it's been a brilliant Six Nations. I think it's been quality games, you know, I think... Uh, I was in the ground for Ireland France, a fantastic game. Um the Scotland France game was a was a was a very good game. Um you mean Italy Ireland was a fantastic game. And, and Ireland made a few changes and you could see that you know it isn't beyond the realms of possibility as we've seen from the analysis on, on this show that you know I mean Italy could could have taken the lead with uh with less than 12 minutes to go, Adrian. Yeah. So that's all you look for in these games, you know. But it's been a f- fantastic competition, which, you I mean, you look at the finish um, England has. So England have France at home and away to Ireland. So from their point of view, th- their competition is only really starting again. Uh, and Ireland have been models of consistency with every team looking to beat them. And uh, in regard to Scotland, they have been... Um, improving quickly and consistently and they have threats all over the park which a lot of people probably underappreciate uh, because their back three with Hogg and Van der Merve are, 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 are very, very dangerous players. Their centres are playing together um, a lot and with Finn Russell anything in that regard can happen and I think they've added a bit of steel up front. I think Johnny Sexton was getting a little bit annoyed uh, during the week. He was saying one of the press conferences Irish rugby tagged him in a post that he didn't quite appreciate about the 557 points haul and the record and chasing it down, uh, which he kind of said, you know, I suppose adds a little bit of pressure to him. He said it's not it's not a record running that he that he's ever sought out to to catch. He's only seven points off, so could could uh, hunt you down this weekend potentially. Like, I'm sure it gets annoying for a player because every second journalist wants to ask you about the the points record when, when you're that close to it. Does it get frustrating in press conferences because clearly everyone wants to ask Johnny about it this week? Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, I think it's when you're. That's an individual record, you know. And I think when you're part of a team that you care a lot about and you're the captain of, there's there's definitely more important goals. But as a as a competitor, that's certainly something that he's going to be very proud of. And and he's worked hard and he's a serious competitor. So uh, uh, whatever Johnny gets, and I've said it to him, he he deserves because he's. 37 years of age and he's given everything to, to it so when he breaks that record he, he will deserve to do it because as I said to my players nowadays there's there's no hard luck stories you get out of it what you put into it and he's put a lot into it so I think from his point of view um, you know he's going to be uh, posting a new target for, for, for someone else to, 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 to chase down um, Have you got it stuck into the mentee yet over there? What's the Oh, you did a little bit of googling. When no, you I haven't. I, I, I haven't. I haven't. I was in. Uh, I was in Marrakesh a few years ago, and I would be oh. very partial to the you know the teapot with the amazing. Jeez, I'm, I'm sitting here googling Tagazud at the moment. Fishing village north of Agadir, known for its surfing as well, Ronan. You've, you've got <laughs> yeah. cafes, surf I don't shops. Surf. I don't surf, but um, oh, typical paddy anyway. Day one, just. Um, the lack of sun cream has paid a, a brutal price where days two and three will be indoor I think <laughs> <laughs> would you the shins rec- are burnt off me would you recommend it is it, is it a place you'd recommend visiting uh, should I say nothing I sat in my hat yesterday for a day he's like get off the line lads get off the line sure, it was Wednesday two days ago he was practicing his kicking yeah yeah there's well, a, there's a, yeah the, the 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 decision the big decision today is whether to get the camel ride on the beach or not. That's the <laughs> ah you have to do it, don't you? Well, where we're coming from today with the, like freezing temperatures and everybody <laughs> snowed in, that is not a bad dilemma to have. Uh, get the sun cream on. Enjoy yeah. the weekend. All right, you too. See you lads. Thanks for the chat. Ronald Carr on the line uh, from Morocco.